This is the 2020 Math Kangaroo Bubbles 910 problem number 29. A zigzag line starts at the point A, at one end of the diameter AB of a circle. Each of the angles between the zigzag line and the diameter AB is equal to alpha as shown. After four peaks, the zigzag line ends at the point B. What is the measure of angle alpha? A, 60 degrees. B, 72 degrees, C, 75 degrees, D, 80 degrees, or E, another answer. This is the problem as it originally appeared on the test. And here is where we'll be doing the solution. So to start, as you can see, I have expanded upon the diagram given to us in the problem because we know that after four peaks, the zigzag line ends at point B. So I drew that. As you can see, we have four peaks and then the line ends at B. I also reflected the semicircle given to us in the problem to form a complete circle. And I labeled the vertices so that you can better see what it is I am referring to. In the problem, we already knew that each of the angles between the zigzag line and the diameter AB is equal to alpha. So each isosceles triangle has two angles of measurement alpha, and then I labeled the vertex angle as a measurement of beta. So right now, we know that 2 alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees because these are the three angles that form a triangle, and the sum of the angles of a triangle are, is 180. So we want to come up with one more relationship between alpha and beta, and once we have that, we'll have two unknown variables, two equations, and we'll be able to solve for alpha, and that is the point of the problem. We're trying to find the measure of angle alpha. So you might be wondering, how are we going to come up with that second relationship? Well, one way, the way we're going to do in this video, is to use inscribed angles. So inscribed angles are angles where the vertex lies on a circle, and the sides that form the angle also cross the circumference of the circle. So we're going to look at inscribed angle CAB as an example. So we're looking at this angle. We have the vertex A that's on the circle. And then the side AC and AB, as you can see, those two sides that form it also intersect the circle. So therefore, angle CAB is called an inscribed angle. And something that is nice about working with inscribed angles is that we know that the measurement of the inscribed angle is equal to half the measurement of the angle that it, you can say, opens up to or faces. So in this case, the arc that it opens up to is this arc right here, C, B. So the relationship we can come up with is that oops, angle C, A, B, which we know is equal to a measurement of alpha, is equal to the measurement of arc C, B, divided by 2. That's just the definition of an inscribed angle. Again, the inscribed angle's measurement is equal to half the measurement of the arc that it faces or opens up to. And we can use this fact again. So now we're going to look at a different angle. We're going to look at angle C, I, E. Let's move this over. And as you can see, that angle is, oops, 
that angle is right over here. So again, it's an inscribed angle. I is the vertex on the circle, and then the sides IC and IE both intersect the circle as well. And because it's an inscribed angle, we know that its measurement we have already established is equal to beta, and that must be equal to arc CE divided by 2, because that's the arc that it opens up to. So I'm just going to highlight on top this green color, because that's the arc it opens up to. So you might already be able to tell what our next arc that we're going to look at is, but let's move on. So now we're going to look at E, G, B. That is that measurement right here, which we know is equal to beta. And what does that open up to? It opens up to arc E, B. So we can write it as that measurement must be equal to E, B over 2. And that is this arc right here. So now you can already see what's going on. The green plus the red is equal to the purple marked arcs. So we can come up with a relationship. If we add, let me find a new color. So if we add this beta plus beta, we have two beta, and we can write this as the sum of arc CE over 2 plus arc EB over 2. That is this sum right here. And by definition, we know that, well not by definition, but by looking at the way we structured this diagram, we know that arc CE, which is this portion in green right here, CE plus arc EB is equal to the entire arc CB. So we can add this top portion to get CB, and then we have the same denominator, so we end up with CB over 2. Well, what do we know? We know that this sum, CB over 2, arc CB over 2 is really equal to, is also equal to alpha. So the relationship we came up with is that 2 beta is equal to alpha. So using that first relationship that we talked about, the fact that 2 beta plus, sorry, 2 alpha plus beta is equal to 180, combined with the fact that 2 beta is equal to alpha, we can now solve for alpha. So there's multiple ways you can do it from here, but I decided to rewrite beta as being alpha over 2. I just divide both of these by 2 and end up with beta equal to alpha over 2. And then combine the alphas, we get that 5 over 2 alpha is equal to 180. Then we can multiply both sides by 2 over 5 and get that alpha is equal to 360 divided by five, and then simplifying, alpha is equal to 72 degrees. And that is answer choice B. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos.